we're going to play there. My band Holdout is playing with some other bands, Last Night Songs, um, uh, Fatal Visions, Make Out Tactics. Tactics, and Curtis Henry, the moniker of my coworker Curtis. So he's going to be playing some acoustic songs there too. So if you're bored on Saturday night, come check it out and have a bite to eat at Amy's Place because Amy's Place is good. So stop in Saturday at 6, Amy's Place. I don't know what the address is, but you know Amy's Place if you're from Buffalo. So <laughs> um, other piece of housekeeping. Class tomorrow night, composition with uh, the F stops here every Wednesday or most Wednesdays we have a class at 6.30 online. If you want to sign up for it, go to the website and click on the class button and there's a list of our classes there. Sign up right online. You get a link from Joe after you sign up and you're in the class tomorrow night, 6.30. And another cool thing about his class is too, if you can't make the class or you somehow have an issue or conflict, he will send you a recording of the class after you take it if you pay for it, which is cool. So we'll be right back in a moment to talk to Darren and uh, we'll see you in a minute. All right, welcome back. It is the last Tuesday of the month, so every last Tuesday of the month we do an Artist Spotlight. Is it called Artist Spotlight now, Will? Did you rechristen it, Artist Spotlight? Cool, so we have Darren Whitsett, who is a local artist who does incredible work. Um, he's a, also a, a uh, patron of the store as well, so we, we appreciate that as well. But Darren, let's talk about how you first got the itch for photography. Uh, first got the itch yeah oh started super young yeah. um actually sepa camera um came to my school uh seventh eighth grade mm -hmm. and introduced a program to do um school newspapers yeah 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 and um that's where i initially met them and i think that's about where i first started shooting film mm -hmm. um going to classes there and i think i took their summer program yeah 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 that was the start yeah, we've been we process their film for the summer program all the time or over the years we have i don't know if we do anymore but they always bring in the disposable cameras and stuff and is that where you just kind of started yeah 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 from, um doing processing black and whites yeah 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 back then and uh i think i think they also had um early introduction to photoshop too oh cool so very they cool scanning and make things digital very cool yeah so how long has it been since you first got the itch for photography how long have you been shooting uh, i professionally i think it would be close to 14 years now Wow. Actually, um, it's like 2008. Yeah. So my math might be off. But I, I think that's right. That's when you started. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. That's when my camera got sold. <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing to do with that, I promise. Um, but yeah, I think I've been shooting since I was a kid. I went to McKinley High School. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the senior year of advertising arts there is a photography class. Mm -hmm. um, but prior to that, it was all just, I walked around with my camera all the time. Oh, yeah? I was that kid. So... Uh, but most of the stuff was like bird on wire at sunset. <laughs> <laughs> very, artistic, very artistic. Very artistic. Very artistic. <laughs> or weird, slightly creepy stuff. Just people walking the streets because like, you know, slightly yeah. antisocial. I'm like, this is an interesting show. Yeah, street photography is cool. It's always interesting. Like we get pictures all the time, people doing street photography. And it's always yeah. cool stuff. Some people do it humorously. Some people do it seriously. It's, great. Yeah. it's really cool. It's a really, um, it's a really cool genre of photography. So what yeah. would you say is your concentration in photography? Like what do you, um, what do you focus your energy that is interesting because I th portraits, I guess, really, um, the type of portraits vary. Mm -hmm. I think when I first started getting into photography more professionally, I wanted to be a fashion photographer. It yeah, seemed yeah. like the coolest thing to get into. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've done, I do a little bit of glamour, a little bit of commercial stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I think people and trying to make people look their best in that particular space is really where I mm -hmm. find the most joy. I love headshots. Like a, a nice, clean, crispy headshot is like my favorite thing. Ever. Yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, so... You have a website, yeah, yeah Photo Studio sure. 46. Why is it called that? Um, well, my when I started my photography business, um, a lot of the original branding was just me as a photographer. But mm -hmm. as my skill set widened and the types of photography I could do expanded, I mm -hmm. kind of turned it into a. I work out of my little studio. Mm -hmm. um, and the studio address is 46. So there you go. Because photographers tend to be very simple. Yes. Called it what it was. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a full time gig for you? Full time gig. Yeah. I've been full time been full time photographer for about fourteen years. So here's a question for you. So I've been shooting part time for mm -hmm. forever since I've been doing photography. Yeah. 
like when did you decide to this is what I'm just gonna do? Like how did how do you make that jump from the regular life to just the photographer's life? That that is an interesting story actually. Yeah. Um mostly because I think I was doing it part time, like I think everybody started mm-hmm. to do sort of a hobby and then yeah. I'm like, Oh, I can actually make some money doing this. But I was working jobs that were fine, but mm-hmm. you know, the trade off for time for money became kind of apparent at a certain point. My mm-hmm. first like couple paid gigs I made in a weekend what I made in two weeks working mm-hmm. at a, a nine to five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was definitely. Like, if I put more energy into this, I could probably just do this. Definitely, sort of definitely. Thing. Definitely. Um and at the time it might have been a little naive because I think at some like maybe like six months later I was like, I'm done with this and quit. <laughs> <laughs> um but I'm also uh sort of stubborn. Yeah, yeah. Um and honestly there was a lot of struggling, but because I'm just stubborn, mm-hmm. I'd almost I almost basically went homeless, like just trying to be a full time photographer. Yeah. Um, and it took a couple of years, but I found a, a good balance. But I also have a other, couple other skill sets. I'm a graphic designer as well. Yeah, there you go. So I had other stuff to float me around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that definitely ties in graphic design and photography. You know? Yeah. You were like an all in one shop right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did you design your website? Yeah. Um, actually, well, the one I have now, uh, mm-hmm. no, I did my first two I did. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that I needed to like take a step back from that. Mm-hmm. Doing too many jobs at one time, learning how to delegate was definitely part of the business yeah, yeah. part of photography, yeah, definitely. which I think is where all the struggling happened. Definitely. Most starving artists, I think, are like that. You know yeah. What I'm saying? Yeah. So, we don't know what to charge, you know, or we think yeah. we're charging too much or we just <laughs> like, we're like, yeah, there's a lot. There's a whole other skill set to learn. Yeah. You have the, the talent to do a thing, but how do I make this functional for me to like live off of it? Yeah, I think it's the biggest struggle. Yeah, I think a lot of people I hear like they tell photographers you should like take business and not photography because you can learn photography is in you, you know, yeah. but business is something you have to definitely learn. In but, hindsight, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I definitely. Really Even in this day and age where you can learn like a ton of stuff like everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's like stuff all around you where you can learn photography and stuff. But um Yeah. So um Can you close the door over there? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> These people in the studio. Quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. <laughs> anyway, so, well, what do you guys for as questions? What is the most challenging? Has one of the most challenging photo projects and why? Most challenging photo projects. Um. Okay, there's a there's a couple angles to this to mm-hmm. answer this one. Yeah. Because I think my approach to photography is very loose. Um. I find it more to be a discovery thing. Like mm-hmm. I'll pick a couple things that I want to aim toward and not necessarily have a solid end goal. Mm-hmm. I just make what I can make and whatever's at the end. Mm-hmm. That's where we that's what we get. And I will kind of refine that process over time because mm-hmm. it's a learning process for me. It's like, okay, what can I turn this into? Mm-hmm. And as I refine, it becomes what it was going to be as opposed to me trying to plan it out from the, yeah. the set. Yeah. So I think that's like my creative process for a lot of time. So um the human pro- the human project um, was probably one of the most intricate ones I've gotten into, um, which is a series of photos. I shoot black and white. I love it. It's like my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. So to challenge myself, I decided to do the complete opposite of that and just splash everything with a bunch of colors. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a lot of shooting and experimenting with like um, consistent lights mm-hmm. and flashes mm-hmm. and trying to modify colors mm-hmm. and experimenting with ways to do that. I was using like how... Uh, so that stuff you wrap for the holidays, like the plastic wrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like plastic cups just to change color and get different textures to the light, all mm-hmm. types of stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I learned a lot in that process. And I mm-hmm. think that's the most challenging, the most fun, the most rewarding thing I've done as far as like projects, I'd say. Okay. I so a, I got another question. Mm-hmm. Okay, producer Will. <laughs> so do you like how do you handle shooting a big project and then having to edit that big project as far as workflow, as far as turnaround times, like mm. how do you handle that? Yes. So that is, I think that is one of the biggest struggles for a lot of photographers. I hate editing pictures. Yeah. Worst I, thing ever. <laughs> I, I have a love hate relationship with it because yeah. I think I started out as a graphic designer. So I was editing photos before I was really taking them mm-hmm. professionally. Um, so my workflow typically, um, I'd say over the years has evolved. One, because I was not super technically savvy. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of my gear was actually holding me back, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, so I thought I was actually a pretty slow editor. I'm relatively faster now, okay. but it's because I've upgraded the gear to keep up with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so my typical workflow for big projects is just trying to make sure I understand what the 
output is supposed to be so that I can kind of manage the time around that. I struggle with it a lot, honestly, mm-hmm. because my art brain kind of like, Definitely, yeah. if I'm in the mood to do a thing, I'm zipping through it. If I'm not yeah. in the mood to do a thing, it is the hardest <laughs> thing in the world. I agree. Yeah. Um, so typically I just try to have a lot of like communication with people about like the reality of like how long a thing will take, mm-hmm. uh, especially if it's more creative because there's caveats when, when you're dealing with like due dates and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You do what you can to kind of keep it up. It's yeah. not a perfect process, but it's mm-hmm. typically what I do. So um, let's see. I had a question at the tip of my tongue, but um, do you shoot more film or digital or both? Um, I shoot mostly digital. Mm-hmm. I experiment with film when I have time. I haven't shot film in like two years, honestly, mm-hmm. and I'm ashamed to say it. Mm-hmm. But um, I have a twin lens reflex camera, so yeah. I've got like some 120 film that I've been itching to like get into. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a genuine love for that like format. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do shoot some video, mm-hmm. um, which is a newer thing for me. I've been I've worked on like YouTube channels and yeah. done production stuff like that, but uh, video as a creative outlet is mm-hmm. newer. So like mm-hmm. I've been making stuff like that this last year, especially yeah. because of social media and reels yeah. and things like that. Definitely. Yeah. So how do how do people like how does someone find you? Like how do they how does a client find you? Um, honestly, you can Google me, mm-hmm. uh, Darren LW on basically, if you, if you put it into the Google thing, I pop up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like, let's say like, I go, let me rephrase that. So like, like someone, like how does someone typically choose you, man? Um, good question. Yeah. And I think I ask that question to people all the time yeah. <laughs> and it's all over the place really. Um, most of the time, um, I think Instagram, Facebook, mm. word of mouth. Um, most of my like marketing is word of mouth. Mm-hmm. I do my best to build relationships with people. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a very like people person, not people person. I, like, I do you. great in small groups. <laughs> I hear you. Um, and I've built a lot of my network out through just like referrals and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that's probably been the, my relationships have been basically what have been keeping me afloat, really. Yeah, very good. I mean, that's the way to do it because organically building your 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 uh, your network is the way to do it because you know people know you and they trust you and all that stuff. Which I think yeah, is it's good. the best referral, honestly. Yeah, instead of this like you know pay someone and have mm-hmm. random people find you and like I mm-hmm. I don't mesh with this person type yeah. stuff, you know. Sometimes this happens too. I do get a lot of like as I've been building up my SEO for mm-hmm. um, Google and stuff like that. Yeah, it's been expanding the network of people that are finding me, mm-hmm. um, and that's been interesting because that's been like new in the last year or so mm-hmm. for completely pe- people who I have. I'm there completely outside of my circle, not mm-hmm. finding me. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of gratitude for that. But yeah. Okay, so unless you have something, well, I have a final question. Okay. So let's say let's say Rooney over here is like, I want to be a photographer. Mm-hmm. What what do you tell Rooney? Like what 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 advice do you give Rooney to, as far as photography? Okay. So again, a lot of levels to the question, mm-hmm. and I think experimentation is really the key mm-hmm. because what do you like about photography mm-hmm. you know there's so many things you can shoot mm-hmm. um some you may detest some you may fall absolutely in love with mm-hmm. so be open to experimentation mm-hmm. um and the quickest way for i'm an experimenter so for yeah. me playing around with my camera is how i got good mm-hmm. at it yeah, yeah um and then beyond that like understanding how to see light mm-hmm. if you can understand how to work the camera and how to see light yeah like the world is your oyster, as they say. Definitely. That's, I think that's the phrase. Is that the yeah, phrase? yeah, definitely. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I was talking to a photographer the other day. It's like, I mean, he was telling me about how, like, people don't understand the exposure triangle. Yeah. And, like, how it's simple to, like, probably you, mm-hmm. but a lot of people just don't get what that yeah. is, you know, yeah. which is, I, which I, is I, interesting. I really think, because I struggle with it, too, mm-hmm. um, like, being able to explain it, like, I understand it. Yeah. But, like, saying to somebody, it's like, it's, it's all relativity. Yeah, because I think the the biggest question people get when mm-hmm. when someone's talking to a photographer is like, "What are what are your settings?" Yeah, and I'm not sure how much that would actually matter if you were trying to copy the thing if you weren't exactly. specifically where I am. Exactly. Right now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people get that. Like, well, how do I set my camera? Like, where are you going? You know, like, <laughs> you know are you like, you know, is it later today, earlier yeah, today? Yeah. Like, like, diagnose outside? the situation for me. Can even. Yeah, so, that's yeah. A, that's a question we get a lot in the store. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Like, what? Like, uh, what? Do, how do I set my camera? But anyway. Yeah. But um. <laughs> 
this was a cool. I mean, it's like I think it's the first real conversation we've had. We talked in the store a little bit, but this is a good. Yeah, I'm glad we got I got to know you and stuff. Vibes. So, um, so thank you for coming on. So if people want to find you, where do they find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Darren LW. You can find me at um, PhotoStudio46.com. Mm-hmm. You want to book a session? I'm actually gonna be working on doing some um, online courses and classes and ebooks oh, pretty soon. Very cool. So people can look forward to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm hoping to get a little bit more social. Awesome. Network with some more photographers and some more people just to do some hangouts. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. And if you like this, like, share, subscribe, tell five friends and have them tell five friends. And we will see you next week for our um, What's in Your Bag, which is our normal first Tuesday of the month show. So we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Locally owned and operated for over 50 years, Delaware Camera is your number one spot for all your camera needs, education, accessories, printing, and more. Located at 2635 Delaware Avenue in Buffalo. Visit Cameraspot.com 